Intelligence agencies have infiltrated and created some satanic groups, with the resurgence of these groups beginning in 1966, particularly with the birth of the Church of Satan, founded by Anton LaVey. LaVey studied criminology in San Francisco and worked in the San Francisco Police Department Crime Lab. He also worked as an informant for Interpol. Prior to the Church of Satan, LaVey ran a group called the Magic Circle. LaVey's most famous associate is the National Security Agency General Michael Aquino. At the time of his membership in LaVey's group, Aquino was an army specialist in intelligence and psychological warfare. In 1973, he became the executive officer of the 306th Psychological Operations Battalion, contemporary with his founding of the Church of Set. General Michael Aquino wrote, From PSYOP to Mind War, The Psychology of Victory. Aquino's thesis stated that enemy populations could be subdued by inflicting a state of psychological terror and feelings of imminent destruction. He discusses the use of psychotronic weapons or electromagnetic weapons that influence the mind. Capitulation could be induced without firing a shot by extremely low frequency signals piggybacked on broadcasts of radio, TV, or microwave communications in order to influence and manipulate the thoughts and feelings of the target population. During the 1960s he was prominent in the Church of Satan and a close friend of Anton LaVey until he started his own Church of Set. A police intelligence report dated July 1, 1981 reads, quote, The Church of Set is a group of hundreds of members that operates on a national level. Michael Aquino is the official head and, and rules through a council of nine who are in fact his lieutenants." Unquote. At least two members of the council of nine at that time were members of army intelligence. In the late 1980s Aquino was accused by the San Francisco Police Department of being involved in a satanic child molestation ring centered on the daycare at the Presidio military base where Aquino was stationed at the time. Probable victims numbered at 68, many of whom had contracted venereal disease. Twenty-two families filed sixty-six million dollars in claims against the army, claiming that criminal charges against Michael Aquino were dropped due to pressure from the army. General Aquino admitted to renting the German castle where the Nazi SS were formed and reenacting the secret ceremony among fellow intelligence officers dressed in full Nazi regalia. General Aquino is now the highest ranking officer in the National Security Agency along with General Black and General Hayden. It is important to remember that General Aquino is first and foremost a military intelligence officer with over 40 years experience in counterinsurgency operations and an expert in psychological warfare. General Aquino's psychological warfare campaign has started or infiltrated cults and other closed systems as part of a concerted effort to control large numbers of people and to destabilize the centers of constitutional and legal authority both here in the United States and in other nations. This methodology is part of a concerted plan that spans several generations. The Church of Satan and the Church of Set, as well as other cults and mainstream organizations, are closed systems with their own belief systems that are insular and separate from the reality that most people take for granted. These closed systems allow large numbers of people to be manipulated into performing antisocial acts that most members of the greater society would not contemplate. Aquino first participated in MKUltra-related activities in Vietnam as part of the Phoenix program in the 1960s. These ongoing MKUltra operations are functioning as a counterinsurgency and infiltration operation aimed at destabilizing the United States and other industrialized nations. The following cults have been used by General Aquino or his associates to continue MKUltra operations outside of the laboratory. The mass suicides at Jonestown of 890 people had similar threads, a cult with sinister connections. 
Jim Jones, who had connections to the CIA, set up his utopian experiment on the same land the CIA had used to train mercenaries to fight in Angola. According to investigators, the Jonestown experiment was conceived of by Dr. Lawrence Laird Layton, staffed by him and financed by Layton. The African-American cult had at its core a Caucasian inner council composed of Layton and his family. Layton was a chemist in the Manhattan Project and head of the Army's Chemical Warfare Research Division in the 1950s. The People's Temple cult took over the Mendocino State Hospital as a part of a government pilot project to evaluate the feasibility of deinstitutionalizing mental patients. After a reduction in state funding, most of the patients at the Mendocino State Psychiatric Hospital were released into the custody of the People's Temple. Congressman Leo Ryan was assassinated in his attempt to investigate the cult. The pathologist in Guyana reported 80 to 90 percent of the victims' bodies had fresh needle marks. Other victims had been shot or strangled. In 1981, the survivors sued the former head of the CIA for, quote, enhancing the economic and political powers of James Warren Jones, unquote, and of conducting mind control and drug experimentation on the temple flock. The Manson family was associated with the Process Church, which according to the Utah Department of Public Safety, moved to southern Utah and changed their name to the Foundation. In a 1990 internal memo authored by church authority Glenn L. Pace, allegations were made of ritual abuse and human sacrifice. Pace writes that he has met with 60 victims of ritual abuse, but there were probably two to three times as many victims. Fifty-three were female and seven were male, eight of which were children. All are members of the Mormon Church. Forty-five victims alleged they witnessed or participated in human sacrifice. The majority were abused by relatives. All had d developed psychological problems such as multiple personality disorder. Quote, the memories come in layers. The first might be of incest. Another layer might well be the memory of seeing people hurt or even killed. Then they remember having seen babies killed. Another layer is realizing that they participated in the sacrifices. One of the most painful memories may be that they even sacrifice their own baby. I have only seen those coming forth to get help. They are in their twenties and thirties for the most part. I can only assume that it is expanding geometrically, and am horrified by the numbers represented by the generation who are now children and teenagers." Unquote. Dr. Joseph Mengele found that trauma bonding and mind control work best when the victim is forced to kill someone they love, usually a twin. The Franklin Conspiracy refers to a sexual blackmail operation and savings and loan fraud that began in Omaha, Nebraska in the early 1980s. Larry King, a 300-pound pedophile, operated a national child prostitution network that catered to wealthy patrons and Republican Party insiders. King was one of the fastest rising stars in the Republican Party. He sang the national anthem at the Republican Convention in 1984 and 1988. King and his associates defrauded Franklin's savings and loan of forty million dollars and used the residents of Boys Town and other children to videotape powerful and influential men and women engaged in sex acts with minors. These blackmail operations took place during fundraising parties for the Republican Party. Those involved stayed late for the after-party that included drugs and sex with minors. The strategy of early MKUltra was to use sexual blackmail operations that targeted political figures in order to ensure continued funding from legislators. Victims who came forward testified that King and his associates performed satanic rituals and human sacrifices. Many of the children who came forward with their stories have since been murdered or imprisoned. 
the most prominent and vocal victim has been held in solitary confinement longer than any other person in Nebraska history. Larry King served two years for fraud and was promptly employed by his good friend, the editor of an Omaha newspaper. The Unification Church of Rev. Sung Young Moon had close connections to the KCA, the Korean Central Intelligence Agency, since its creation by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. Four of Moon's early leaders were Army officers with KCIA credentials, and Moon's most influential aide, Dr. Bo Hai Pak, was liaison between the CIA and the KCIA, making numerous trips to the NSA headquarters at Fort Meade, Maryland. Moon's church is fabulously rich, with at least 600 front groups. It purchased the Washington Times newspaper for over a billion dollars. Moon has claimed that he is the reincarnation of Jesus, Buddha, and Mohammed. He preaches love, but attacks his critics mercilessly, and uses the terminology of violence and apocalyptic revelation. In March of 2004 in Washington, D.C., the Reverend Moon was crowned as the Prince of Peace in a ceremony at the Dirksen Senate Office Building in the presence of 86 U.S. congressmen and 26 U.N. ambassadors. The Children of God cult in Argentina has been involved in ritual abuse of children for decades, but has evaded conviction despite voluminous, undeniable evidence and victim testimony. David Moses Berg founded the church in the 1970s and advocated using sex to entice new members into the church. Berg's own children and former members have stated that they were forced into sex between the ages of 4 and 10 years old with high-level church members. The victims also testified to a sexual blackmail and infiltration campaign aimed at some of the most powerful men in Europe, particularly in the media, legal community, and government. Powerful figures of political and financial support for the family include Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi, Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet, and King Juan Carlos of Spain. The sect currently estimates its numbers at 300,000 converts in 60 countries. In 1992, the Family Children's Choir sang in the White House for Barbara Bush to kick off a Christmas show in the East Room. The sect also sang for George Bush Sr. after he toured the damage of Hurricane Andrew in South Florida. The Cult Awareness Network was founded two decades ago in the wake of the mass suicides in Guyana that claimed the lives of 890 of Jim Jones' followers. The nonprofit national organization assisted the desperate loved ones of people caught up in the cult scene. The organizations targeted by CAN were the KKK, the Aryan Nations, dozens of obscure fundamentalist and evangelical Christian groups, the Church of Satan, the Moonies, followers of political extremist Lyndon LaRouche, and the Church of Scientology. An organized blizzard of lawsuits produced judgments totaling $5 million and led to Cannes financial ruin. In 1996, their logo, furniture, and phone number were auctioned off by a bankruptcy judge. Scientology lawyers took possession of 20 years' worth of Cannes' highly sensitive case files containing information on thousands of people who had turned to Cannes for help in rescuing their friends and relatives. Scientology is known for harassing its enemies and retaliating against suppressives, people who ridicule Scientology teachings. These teachings include L. Ron Hubbard's decree that humans are made up of clusters of spirits called Thetans, who were banished to Earth about 75 million years ago by an evil galactic ruler named Xenu. Hubbard was a Pulp Fiction writer who'd served in the Navy and hit it big in 1950 by coming up with the concept of Dianetics that he dubbed a modern science of mental health that remained at the core of Scientology practice. 
One of its staples is a simplified lie detector called an e-meter, which is supposed to measure electrical changes in the skin while subjects discuss intimate details of their lives. Hubbard claimed that unhappiness sprang from mental aberrations called engrams, and that counseling sessions with the e-meter could help rid them of them. Scientologists refer to the extensive and expensive process of clearing the mind in order for this to occur as auditing. But during the 1970s, the IRS conducted some auditing of its own and accused L. Ron Hubbard of skimming millions of dollars from the church, laundering it through dummy corporations, and stashing it in Swiss bank accounts. Although he died before the case was adjudicated, his wife and ten other former church leaders went to prison in the early 1980s for infiltrating, burglarizing, and wiretapping dozens of private and government agencies in an attempt to block their investigations. The majority of Masons join and undergo rituals and rites that seem to have no meaning. It is only when they enter the highest levels, the circle within a circle, if you will, that the secret knowledge is shared as to what the organization and its rituals are really about. This knowledge is imparted to a select few who achieve 32nd degree status or higher. What these rites are and what this secret knowledge is has yet to be proven. The Masons are one of the most prominent links between victims of satanic ritual abuse. Victims of SRA are in effect victims of MK Ultra experiments in childhood. Literally thousands of people from different parts of the country who have never been in contact with each other are telling essentially the exact same story. That as very young children, these people were forced to participate in satanic ritual abuse including child rape and ritual sacrifice. The consistency of the stories, the links to MK Ultra and satanic ritual abuse, seem to be a fantastic story at first, but victim testimony is very consistent, and the association of both programs to high-level Mason members has been repeated many times. Many of the personalities involved in the original MK Ultra experiments were high-level Masons, including Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, Dr. George Estabrooks, Dr. Ewan Cameron, and others in the intelligence community. Masons have been accused of many things over the years, but it is equally likely that the Masons were infiltrated by CIA perpetrators of MKUltra in an effort to control a closed system and have access to experimental subjects. MKUltra was moved out of the laboratory and into these closed systems of various kinds that could be manipulated and used to supply large numbers of children for mind control experiments and blackmail operations without directly implicating the CIA. MKUltra and the False Memory Syndrome Foundation Dr. Martin T. Orn is an original board member of the False Memory Syndrome Foundation, the FMSF, as well as a senior CIA researcher at the University of Pennsylvania's Experimental Psychiatry Laboratory. The FMSF was created to deny the existence of cult mind control and child abuse and is staffed with psychiatrists connected to the CIA and their mind control experimentation. The phenomenon of children being coached or led to invent tales of abuse or make up such stories does exist, but comprises a small minority of the reported cases of child abuse, between 2 and 8 percent of all reported cases. One survey found 88 percent of therapists considered ritual child abuse a very real social problem. Only 5 percent of all child abuse cases ever enter the courtroom. Half of these end with the child returned to the custody of the abusive parent. Dr. Orne's research into hypnoprogramming at Cornell University in the 1960s was paid for by the Human Ecology Fund, which also funded some of Dr. Ewan Cameron's brainwashing and remote mind control experimentation. CIA-funded black psychiatry at that time specialized in electroshock lobotomies, drugging agents, incapacitants, hypnosis, 
sleep deprivation, and radio control of the brain. The FMSF founder, Dr. Ralph Underwager, and his wife openly advocate pedophilia, saying that it is God's will adults engage in sex with children. Underwager told a British reporter in 1994, quote, that scientific evidence proved 60% of all women molested as children believed the experience was good for them. Dr. Underwager is the world's foremost authority on false memory, but in court is repeatedly revealed as a charlatan. Numerous other members of the FMSF have connections to pedophilia, covert operations, and black psychiatry. Peter and Pamela Freyd, executive directors of the FMSF, have been accused of child abuse by their daughter, a professor of psychology at the University of Oregon. The industrial production of FMSF stories in journals, newspapers, and TV have shaped public opinion. The very concept of false memory serves the same purpose as Holocaust denial. The major crimes are obstructed. The accused wears the veil of a martyr, and the victim is reviled. Dr. Douglas Besheroff is director of the American Enterprise Institute and former director of the National Center of Child Abuse and Neglect. He writes articles that attack the victims of abuse and has been caught fabricating statistics when claiming scientific rationale for his claims. In 1986, Besheroff published Unfounded Allegations, A New Child Abuse Problem, and numerous other cover stories to confuse the issue. These individuals are engaged in a psychological warfare operation to cover up reports of the agency's mind control operations. For years, the CIA collaborated with cults, many of them founded by the government, in order to conceal the development of mind control technology. Dr. Besharov associated with Irving Kristol, a veteran CIA psychological warfare specialist. Ritual abuse skeptics with CIA connections are covering up the latest phase in CIA-sponsored mind control experimentation. The McMartin Preschool In preparation for the McMartin Preschool child abuse trial, 389 toddlers were interviewed. Nearly all of them described abuse at the preschool and do to this day. Some 80 percent had physical symptoms, including blunt force trauma of sexual areas, scarring, rectal bleeding, and sexual diseases. Paul and Shirley Eberly published the only two books available on the case, The Politics of Child Abuse, 1986. They achieved national status as child abuse experts. In courts of law, their work is frequently cited. They lecture widely to receptive audiences and have been speakers at a conference held by victims of child abuse laws, vocal. These two individuals ran an underground tabloid Finger in the 1970s. Finger delved heavily into sadomasochistic sex, sex with children, and sex acts involving human excrement. These two pedophiles seek to portray every abuser as a victim of mass hysteria, satanic panic, and witch hunts. They are just two of many. The parents of the McMartin preschoolers hired scientists and technicians who unearthed a series of underground tunnels beneath the school confirming the children's testimony. The longest tunnel was 45 feet long and 6 feet below the school, with a 9-foot chamber spoken of by the children. Another branch led to the triplex next door, surfacing beneath a roll-away bathtub. Forensic tests on thousands of objects found at the site included 200 animal bones. The tunnels were dug in 1966, the year of the school's construction, by the father of the defendant, Charles Bucky. Bucky built a school and worked for Hughes Tool Company. There is an old adage, Hughes is the CIA. Pick it up and put it in this bag. That's right, and next will be a small, harmless snake. Pick it up behind the head. That's right. And put it in here. That's right. All the way, make sure it's in. That's right, and now there'll be a large snake, which you'll pick up behind the head. Behind the head. 
Cricket. Cricket. Let go. That's right. Your eyes are closing now. Just sinking deeper. And as I ask you to open your eyes, eyes, you're going to be aware that there's a beaker in front of you. Do not touch the beaker. And there will be two other beakers also in front of you. You look at that. It's all right to open your eyes now. You'll see the beakers. Now I want you to focus on this beaker. Because shortly I'll ask you to do something. This beaker you want to be careful of because it is filled with acid. It is nitric acid. You've had chemistry, haven't you? And you know that the nitric acid dissolves copper. I'm going to put a penny into the acid. Look what happens. Now I want you to reach in with your hand and pick up the penny out of the acid and put it into the speaker. Take it very quickly. Go ahead. Put it in there. That's right. First, put your whole hand and close your eyes. Nothing else at all. Nothing else at all. Only my voice. Nothing else at all. That's right. That's right. All right. Now I want you to put your hand in the speaker. That's right. Only my voice. Nothing else at all. That's right. Now when you open your eyes, you're going to be aware that the beaker is still there in front of you. But beside you, you'll be aware that there's a man who's been responsible for all of the nuisance today, all of the discomfort. And you're going to become more and more annoyed at him as you think about that. In fact, you're going to take, pick up the beaker and throw the contents right at him. You're going to take the beaker and you'll feel good doing that. All right, and you'll do it quickly. Open your eyes, you'll see the beaker in front of you. Pick it up and throw it at him. Throw it at him. That's it. As you saw, we changed the acid for colored water while the subject's eyes were closed. The subject not only couldn't see this, but wasn't really aware of it because the smell of the acid was strong enough in the area to be quite compelling. Yet she threw the acid, what she thought was acid, at someone else. But in the same token, she picked up the rattlesnake and she was willing to take a penny out of the fuming acid. The reason why you, she did it, however, was not so much the fact that she was hypnotized, but the fact that she knew that I couldn't afford to have anybody be hurt, and I wouldn't want anybody to be hurt, and for that reason she trusted me. And it was the trust that mattered. I decided that I liked Anton LaVey. He was a pleasant man. He believed in what he was doing. And underneath his uh, somewhat Mardi Gras exterior, I sensed that there was an individual who uh, did in fact have a new perspective on the human equation on what humanity is.